right, guys, we had a sudden rise in the KP, a geomagnetic storm. It wasn't from the sun. They're telling us it was from a weakened magnetic field. Well, I have something to show you. What's up, sky watchers? What is up indeed? Monday, September 15th, 2025. A shock above and below. Human trauma, ice scat heating, and the unexplained solar wind jump. Last week, the world was shaken on multiple levels. On the ground, a shocking political event seized the world's attention. At the same time, the skies above us were humming with frequencies that can't be ignored. The data speaks clearly. Our ionosphere was being heavily heated. Our geomagnetic field showed abnormal surges. And the official explanation? That the magnetosphere itself is weakening. But that doesn't tell the full story. The charts I've gathered show a concentrated burst of ELF and the Schumann Band agitation on September 11, 2025. These frequencies are not abstract numbers. They are Earth's natural rhythms, the background heartbeat we all live within. When these frequencies spike, it affects satellites, grids, weather systems, and most importantly, our own biology. The KP index, a global measure of geomagnetic activity, tells part of the story. On September 13th and 14th, activity was quiet to unsettled, only KP 1 to 3. But by September 15th, the index shot upwards, reaching KP6 to KP7, a G2 class geomagnetic storm. That's strong enough to trigger auroras far south of their usual range and disrupt power systems. Yet space weather monitors offered no clear upstream cause. They simply said the magnetosphere is weaker now, and that's why the storm hit harder than expected. But that's not the whole truth. Because when we look back to September 10th and 11th, the resonance charts and magnetometers show something else entirely. Multiple independent monitors recorded massive ELF activity, surged with intensity and stayed elevated for hours, not minutes. These weren't random spikes, it was a sustained resonance drive, something that looked very much like a major ionospheric heating run. And here's where the pieces fit together. HARP wasn't showing any public activity, but ISCAT, the European ionospheric heater in Tromsø, Norway, was scheduled and active during that exact window. Their own published portal shows heating operations in progress on September 10th and 11th. When I overlay their schedule with the resonance data, the match is perfect. The ELF peaks coincide with ISCAT's heating blocks. This is the smoking gun. The physical skies confirm this as well. In Norfolk, England, photographs captured segmented ribbed cloud structures at sunset. That's the kind of pattern you see when atmospheric layers are electrically charged and begin to ripple under frequency pressure. It's not just weather. It's an imprint of electromagnetic interference. The official record then shows what happened next. By September 15th, the KP index jumped to storm levels. With Earth shields already being weakened, the days of artificial pumping beforehand meant that a modest solar wind increase translated into an outsized geomagnetic storm. This is what happens when you pre-stress a system. Smaller pulses cause bigger waves. But these disturbances aren't just charts and colored spectrograms, they are felt. This morning, September 15th, I woke up with intense vertigo and nausea, the room spinning as though my balance had been cut loose. My ears rang with a piercing tone that hasn't fully let up yet. And I know others experience similar symptoms when I look around my feed on Facebook. The dizziness, the headaches, the sleep disruptions, even agitation and confusion. Animals react as well. When the field shifts, the birds lose their orientation, pets grow restless, and livestock cluster nervously. These are the bioeffects of living inside of a resonant field that's being jolted. Human frequencies overlap directly with human brainwave rhythms. When the Earth's heartbeat is artificially driven or destabilized, it reverberates through our nervous systems. And when that's combined with the global shock events on the ground, 
The result is one-two punch psychological disorientation reinforced by physiological destabilization. This isn't new. On September 11, 2001, when the towers fell, Princeton's Global Consciousness Project recorded a massive statistical anomaly, what they called a global coherence event. The Russian Schumann monitors reported unusual spikes in the 7 to 12 hertz range that same morning. Human trauma and Earth's electromagnetic environment are connected. What happened in 2001 echoes what we're seeing in 2025. So when we put it all together, the story is clear. Last week, during one of the most shocking political events in recent history, ISCAT was heating the ionosphere on a major scale. The data shows it. The skies reflected it. The resonance charts screamed it. And four days later, with no clear solar driver, Earth's field erupted into a geomagnetic storm. They called it a sign of a weakening magnetosphere. I call it evidence that both natural and artificial forces combined to create that storm, leaving us to carry the effects in our bodies and our minds. This is more than numbers on a chart. It's the hum of the sky, the vertigo in our heads, the ringing in our ears, and the restlessness of animals that know instinctively when Earth's field has shifted. It's the nervous system of the planet being jolted from above while humanity is shocked from below. I'd like to thank the supporters of this channel. Much love and many thanks. Okay, Skywatchers, stay aware, be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.